what if you really can have it all? No, really. What if everything you think you desire is only a starting point for the life you are truly capable of creating? On Love, Life, and All Things Weird, we will explore topics from magic to practical step-by-step -step processes and everything in between. There's no place we won't go, nothing too ridiculous or weird, in the quest to live life as grand as possible. Hosts Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer are the embodiment of Opposites Attract. Collectively, they're the summation of Megan's big vision coupled with Suzanne's knack of her details. Partnered in love and in business for the last five years, they're taking co-creation to a whole new level. Join Megan and Suzanne for Love, Life, and All Things Weird, where we will talk about living a life that's inspired, overflowing, and completely awesome. Buongiorno, everybody. We are live from Italia, and we are so excited to be here. Um, we have been on an adventure for the last three weeks. Uh, if some of you or all of you have been following us on Facebook, we have been on a world tour, seriously, almost, it feels like. And um, and we're so excited to be live and to be live with you after our maestro class in Rome with Dr. Dane here. Wow, like five days of magic. And can you even imagine? We're actually talking about magic this month on our magical series. And today we're live from Tuscany and we're really wanting to activate your magic. So Megan is gonna be doing a special magic activation process um, for more potency and more play. And um, we're just gonna see what happens today. So uh, babe, what do you have to say <laughs> about this? Ciao Bella. <laughs> 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 Hello, beautiful. We're <laughs> learning Italian. We have like 20 words, I think. We counted them up at dinner time last night. No, right? you added like six more. We have to like 26. I'm so excited. But if you don't know what 26 <laughs> is in Italian. <laughs> so you guys, we're, we're fluent. We're fluent in Italian now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a total yeah. miracle. Yeah. Well, you guys, I can't even begin to tell you what how magical this place is for me. I um I don't know if some of you know, but um I was adopted and my birth father actually uh was born in Italy and his father was born in Italy and so I have me some Italian and then me. And it's so funny because Suzanne all through this trip has been like, oh, now I get it. Like, I love, like, meat and tra cheese trays. Like, who doesn't love a good meat and cheese tray, right? Uh, how do you say it? Charcuterie? Oh, I think I even said that right. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's like every meal. Like, that's what people are having. Meat and cheese, meat and cheese, meat and cheese and bread, meat and cheese and bread and wine, meat and cheese and bread and wine, and then pesto. And it's like, I can't, I couldn't be happier. I really couldn't be happier. <laughs> I know, and and wine and wine and more wine and um, more cheese and more pasta, uh, and it's a good thing that we are um, really just climbing so many stairs. We have about seventy stairs coming up to our apartment, um, so we go up and down them like five times a day, and um, and we have stairs. There's stairs all over the city. There was stairs in Cinque Terre. Um, last week, millions, millions of, of, so, you know, it's really, we're getting our workout in, even if, you know, we're eating a lot. <laughs> yes, but you see, here's the thing. We're eating in a healthier way. Like, the the wheat isn't processed the way it is in the state, so, like, you don't have the same gluten stuff. They don't add preservatives to the cheese, so it actually... Um, um, has natural bacteria in it, so it helps your digestion. Same with the wine. There's very little sugar in the wine. It's like, it's just, I think this is my healthy, new healthy lifestyle. But the mm -hmm. problem is, is I'm going to have to um, order out to Italy every day, so I'm not sure that's going to work <laughs> in the end. <laughs> well, we're just going to have to come back. 
you know, next year yeah. or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to detox a little bit, but. <laughs> and what do you mean back. detox? I thought it was all healthy. It is all healthy. I'm, I, that was an old point of view, pot and pot. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Interesting point exactly. of view. I have that point of view. And exactly. you know what else I learned, you guys? This, this is, this is magic. I don't get hangovers here. And you know why? It's because preserve. It's the preservers that have been giving me the hangovers all along, not the wine. Oh my goodness, this is such good news. So, are we going to actually talk about our show? Oh, I don't know. I want to just talk about Italy. Can we just talk <laughs> about Italy? Although I have to say, you know, like it, it was so. I've never given this to myself before. Like I, I've always been a perpetual student and I love coaching and I love having a coach and I love going to trainings and I love like being in that learning environment and anybody who knows me knows how much I love that. And, but I, I tend to kind of do this thing where I kind of dine and dash <laughs> where I go in and I do my training and I come back and I work, work, work and I go out and I train and I, and I, I don't, I've never given myself this kind of space to nurture the changes and the shifts that were occurred um, during the maestro training. And it's been so perfect to be in another country where everybody's speaking a different language, you don't know where you're going, and, and there's nothing familiar anywhere. And I think that has been such a gift um, to both of us because one of the things that we tend to do when we learn new things or we go through growth experiences is we generally run back for our old life, some stability point, some anchor of the old world to feel familiar with, to to actually minimize the change that we just created. And so there's something really phenomenal, I think, for both of us in the process of like not having anything familiar. There's no stability point other than each other, which that's come up a couple of times and we've had to do some pot and pocking. But it, it's been really fantastic to nurture the change, to continue the expansion and to go, hey, what else is possible? Because there's nothing in my reality that that I can hang on to really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would say that you know, we flew into Rome and had a couple days and we um, explored the Vatican and uh, was what's so amazing in the Sistine Chapel, which is like a spiritual experience for me. And then we had five days of Maestro and then we went from Maestro to the coast um, to Cinque Terre and now we're in Tuscany. Um, and it, it like everywhere, just being in so many different environments, um, it, it's just, incredible um to experience maestro and then have a whole <clears throat> different frame of reference and basically just being on the go and and almost like being just surrendering to everything you know surrendering to the heat to the humidity to not knowing if you're going to catch a train um to you know uh, different languages all around you and for me it's definitely um it's definitely taken me out of my comfort zone in a really great way because i i don't have those stability points around me that i can grasp onto and i find that i can just be in the moment and actually be in the magic you know like when you're trying to control your whole life um there's no room for magic and that's really what i've been learning in a whole new way being a, um, you know, recovering perfectionist and a a recovering control freak (laughs) is that, Mm -hmm. um, is that magic is, is not really available when you're trying to control and you're constricting, you know, at every turn. So for me, this has been expand, expand, surrender, surrender, be uncomfortable, um, you know, be in new environments that feel almost scary. Um, but also exciting too, and and find out what happens. And you know, we've been posting on Facebook all the magic that's been happening for us, like little moments and big moments this whole time. Um, you know, one of them that I want to talk about is we got into Siena, and we didn't do a lot of kind of like pre-planning for all of the um, 
for all of the, uh, you know, museums and stuff like that. And usually it's like a five to six hour wait to get into um, these big, big Duomos and stuff because there's so many millions of tourists here. And um, we just, w Megan's like, well, maybe we should go over today. And, um, and I was like, well, it's Sunday online. It says it's closed. And she's like, well, I think we should just do it anyway. And so we walked over there. There was nobody there. We got our ticket. We got a, a special tour to go up to the ceiling um, and got this like incredible. I mean, like there was literally maybe 10 people. Um, and the next day we went again and there was a thousand people because um, we got a three day pass. And we were like, wow, holy crap. Like that was so magical to experience the beauty of the Duomo with no crowds, like it's once in a lifetime experience. And that's just magic right there. Mm -hmm. You forgot to tell them the part where you were in control mode before though, honey. Well, please tell darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause, and I, first of all, I want to acknowledge that part of your magic is the ability to play and is the ability to kind of order chaos and go, okay, like, let's pre-buy the t train tickets and we're going to go here and, and, like, getting Airbnbs for us in the center of town so we can walk places. And, I mean, just so much of that is magical. But I feel like the universe was talking to you that morning because nothing was working out. Like, she was trying to buy a ticket for us. And it just, like, in fact, at one point she just kind of threw up her hands and was like, I'm out tour guide is off right and I was like okay cool like what else is possible and I said okay honey let me go let's go down and let's have a cappuccino and let's kind of just mosey and let's see what we can find and I just had this feeling that there were going to be tickets available that it was going to be open even though it said it wasn't I just had this feeling and so it's one of the ways I think that you and I really play with each other is that you have so many gifts around, and we talked a lot about this at the Maestro, you guys. Oh, this is such awesome stuff. We talked about the dance between order and chaos and how, like, mm -hmm. you know, chaos without order is just, well, chaos. And, you know, order with no chaos is just, like, control. And so when you, when you begin to learn how to order chaos, that's when you really step into being a Maestro of creation. And I think that's one of the things I tend to be a little bit more chaotic, just in general. Mm, um, no. You, uh, I know, it's hard to believe. And and you tend to be a little bit more ordered, um, <laughs> sometimes controlling. Um, but, to, <laughs> but together, um, I think that we take, we blend those two energies. And I think we still have, I know I still have a long ways to go with learning how to order my own chaos, right? And and for you, mm -hmm. like, being able to allow yourself to move into the chaos. But mm -hmm. when you do, <clears throat> excuse me, you're so magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it really has been incredible to just totally, oh, and she's going to have a, a coughing attack. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but it really has, it really has been incredible to, play with each other that way this trip especially I've noticed it like just how important it is to have both and to really flow with each other um, because if you guys have ever done any kind of international travel it just like you can do um, pre-planning and that's great but it just doesn't work out you know often the way that it the plan is um, and so there is a flow that um, that I've found, especially on this trip, I think, um, especially going from location to location to location, you know, usually when we travel, we kind of stay put, but not this time. So it's been really incredible. And there, and you know, the, the story about the Duomo, that's just one piece of magic that we're sharing with you. I, I there's probably been five or six, um, different times where we've looked at each other and just said, wow, that is magic. That's magical. And, um, and so, you know, I am new to the conversation around magic. Megan's been talking about magic and miracles and possibilities for 15, maybe 20 years. So, um, so I, I love that I'm having a real time visceral experience of magic and more of it in my life and realizing just how magical I am 
and how magical we can be together. So it's really been such a gift. And I'm excited about our topic today. And you're going to be doing a activation process, right, babe? I am. And I think I'm going to want to call it an infusion process. Because ah, it's very cool. much connect, it's very much connected to the energy that I've been tapping into, my version of SOP, which I'm calling molecular infusion, which is has to do with my capacity to play with mo- molecules and invite molecules in it and um, open up the intelligence inside of molecules and mm-hmm. to um, order them in such a way that it it's creative and it institutes things. And so... Um, and that's something that I do with all of my clients. Like when I work with people one-on-one, um, they begin to actualize things that they haven't before actualized. And sometimes it's kind of interesting because it doesn't always, it's its hardly ever linear how it goes. You know, it's like because it's funny because it's like we do a session on one thing and one other something totally from left field starts, you know, coming in. And it's because we're opening space. And I think it's the one thing that I could say, because something that I'm going to talk about with regards to magic today, is it's super important that we we kind of try to get out of trying to define it, right? Um, define the it? Old, is that what you said? Def, yeah, defining it. Because it's mm-hmm. like anything we define, we almost instantly then create separation with it. And we look mm-hmm. at, okay, I am like that or I'm not like that. And we justify mm-hmm. why we are or aren't that. As soon as we put something into definition, we actually create separation from it. And so mm-hmm. I don't um, – my intent is not to sort of define magic in this series, to, to have it be undefined. But the one thing that I will say is that it's hardly ever linear. <laughs> it hardly ever looks like what you think. It hardly ever shows how you think. Um, it tends to have a surprise quality about it. But I feel like one of the things, the disservice that we've done to ourselves is we've gone, okay, well, magic is if some is if a dragon appears to me, right? And it's like, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a little limited. Just saying, you know. Um, Who says that? Who actually? <laughs> like a five-year-old? I people. <laughs> yeah, I know people. I know people. They think that magic is the, is only. I'm not saying I couldn't pop a dragon in. I think I got very close to have it popping a dragon in today. I'm not saying that's not possible. I'm just saying it cannot be the only definition of magic. Right, um, Christine, our Christine, our producer, is saying that she has hands up to popping in dragons. <laughs> so that's magic, or that's the definition of magic. I love it. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we've talked about this the last couple of weeks about, you know, kind of, what people's definition of magic, and I think we've actually even put kind of our own definition of magic just as a frame of reference last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what I loved in the master class is that um, Jane was saying, you know, like it's undefinable. Like being, he was talking about being a maestro, what it meant to be a maestro. And the more that you try to define what being a maestro is, um, the more you're limiting it, um, the more that you're in um, thought and judgment and what what is a maestro and what isn't a maestro and comparison and conclusion and all that kind of stuff. And I would say that's very true for magic too. Um, and so I think that's why it feels so elusive to a lot of people is and feels like you can't really actually kind of say what it is or even sometimes acknowledge how magical you are because um, you're, it is so elusive. And so it's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, in one minute, you know, you could kind of just say, oh, well, that must have been a fluke, or I didn't really create that. I mean, we just barely, you know, took a train from Florence to Siena, and we were waiting with a whole group of people for a taxi. And so Megan, without me knowing, starts pulling taxis to us, and so do I. So we start energetically pulling taxis to us because we're like fifth in line. We got to get back to our place to do this show. And then like two taxis show up immediately. And I look at her and I say, I've been pulling taxis. And she's like, so have I. So we got here just in time, right? So that is a place that you could be like, oh, well, the taxis were on their way. Oh, well, did we really do anything? Oh, you know, I don't really know if that was magical or not. Or you could just feel into it 
and say, yeah, we created those taxis to come in, right? So that's just another example of magic. So um, darling, since I am the master of breaks, I'm informing you officially that we must go on break and talk more about magic. And I think do more clearing around um, people and their stuff around magic, right? So you're listening to Love Life and All Things Weird. We're talking about magic. We'll be back in a minute. Ciao. Most people live in the land of either or. It's a scary and meager place where one can have either a happy relationship or a successful career, where we can have either lots of time and no money or lots of money and no time to spend it. On Love, Life, and All Things Weird, Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer bring you inspiration, awesome tools for transformation, and full permission to claim your most ridiculous life. Together, they are the embodiment of opposites attract, and the result is true synergistic power. Finding yourself roadside in either or? Megan and Suzanne are here to reintroduce you to one very powerful three-letter word. And. Simple? Yes. Effective? Absolutely. Welcome to the land of and. Listen to Love, Life, and All Things Weird every Wednesday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? Love, Life, and All Things Weird with hosts Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer. Are you scratching your head a bit? Let's chat. Call into the program today and let's find some answers. If you're in the U.S., call 815-880-8255. In Canada, call 613-800-8736 or Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also send questions or comments by sending an email to Suzanne P. Stoffer at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody, to Love Life and All Things Weird. We're talking about magic live from Siena, Italy. Um, it is hot here, people. It is hot. Do not come to Italy in July. I'm just saying it's got to be about 80 degrees in this room that I'm in. So we are sweating, but we are having an awesome time talking about magic. And I wanted to bring out um, the question in the chat room. If you guys haven't come to the chat room yet, oh, for all you listeners, um, come. It's on a2zen.fm. You, pick the, you push the chat button. You come in. To the back. It's super fun. Um, all of our peeps back there, we have a good time. You can ask questions if you're shy and don't want to call. Um, we have lots of conversations that don't ever get on the air. It's super fun. So Kier, um says, um, for me personally, I'm just leaning into more and or, um, into more and to be more open to living magic. I don't feel very strong in that space yet. So when people judge or bat down my expression or expressing it is very difficult to navigate. So she's asking for um, some tricks or tips um, when people around you are kind of discrediting you 
Um, what do you do? How would you how would you talk to Kira, Megan? Well, I have so much to say about this, but the first thing I want to say is there is a reason that Harry Potter was so freaking popular. And it a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's this sort of there's this conflict between it seems people who are more energetic and magical in nature and people who are more linear and controlled. In 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 Harry Potter they talked about it as the the uh muggle, right? Uh versus the, the people who had magic. And um, access consciousness delineates it as humans and humanoids, right? And the thing about it is, is that I, I think it's one of the biggest reasons why we've denied our magic is because it's not in our world. It's, it, we have to go, um, in fact, we call that genre fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this sort of thing in, in our reality that says that magic isn't real. And that people have really bought into the lie of what we call causal reality, which is this plus this equals this. It's the Newtonian world of every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the thing about it is, and, and, and even if you have a scientific mind, you can, uh, you can get behind this, which is that Einstein kind of obliterated a lot of the causal reality principles with his theory of relativity. And we're actually in a new age. We're in an age where we actually can live in the quantum field. And A can be, we can go from A to Q, or we can go from A to Z, or we can go to A to P. And we don't have to, um, we don't have to play in the this plus this equals this anymore. Now, the problem is, is that that's the game everybody else is still playing. So it's like, we, we're um, bouncing a basketball into the middle of a volleyball court and wondering why everybody's looking at us funny, you know? And so it's like we're, we're lit, a lot of us are, that are playing in the magic world, we, we're, we're walking into um, universes where people just do not get it. We're walking into the muggles. And so the first thing that I want to say here is that you've got to play, you've got to acknowledge the magic in you. Because when you do that in a way that is undeniable to you, you won't give a rat's crap whether they believe you or not. Because when, and I don't know if my, the listeners must have uh, probably all had this experience before of when you're like on the top of the world and your just life is awesome and stuff is happening and there's synchronicities and, you know, your mom comes in and poo-poo's it. You're like, okay, whatever. Good luck with that, mom. <laughs> have fun with that life. And when we're really living in the miracle that we are, in the magic that we are, we don't really, it's, it's a, it doesn't really matter that they're naysayers, right? But when we're still a little bit shy, when we're still a little bit wobbly and somebody comes in and, and it's kind of like, you know, it kind of um, pushes over our new toys, so to speak. So the number one thing that I would say is that you've got to get strong in your own magic first. And Suzanne and I are going to talk about some, um, give you some tools to strengthen the capacity for you to acknowledge and develop the capacity to live in your own magic. And as you do that, you can be an invitation for others um, to, to look at the other possibilities that might exist for them. But there's, there's just a certain percentage of the population that's just, never going to get it. They, they live in a linear world, and that's what they're here for, and that's their path, and that's their journey, and that's great. But you're not... So, you're babe, at, yeah. um, I kind of want to jump in here because she's asking some follow-up questions, and I know that I'm the one that has the computer and not you. Um, so, um, so in the meantime, right, like as you're practicing inside of you, um, a really awesome tool that you can use is interesting point of view. I'm not sure if you've heard that one, Kira, but it really, really works. So if you're perceiving or are aware of judgment coming at you, um, you can <clears throat> use this as a tool. Like lower your barrier, right, as the judgment coming towards you, and say, um, wow, that's an interesting point of view that he has that point of view, right? Um, or interesting point of view that I have the point of view that that should affect me somehow or that should stop me, 
right? So um, interesting point of view <clears throat> is a really good tool to mitigate the energy um, or to kind of like, for me, it feels a little bit like kind of standing and observing the experience rather than being really at the effect of it. So that's an awesome tool. Um, also, I think it would be really fun. I, I, I kind of tend to just mess around with people who like, you know, certain family members or whatever, like I go radical, like I go even more extreme with my expression. Um, or, you know, like we're, sometimes like I play with it. Like if I can um, play with, you know, can I get a reaction out of them? Can I get judgment out of them from what I'm doing or what I'm saying, you know, like how fun would that be? So I kind of make it a game um, and that helps me not, you know, get like tapped into the seriousness of it or whatever. Do you have some other tools like in the meantime for her? No, I mean, I, I, I would rather focus on the tools that will build her confidence in her own magic. Um, because I, I feel like that's the, that's the place that will begin to expand her capacity to really be that interesting point of view, right? And so, yeah, I mean, it's really, I mean, like what you, what you just gave her is a great tool to get unstuck. But ultimately, Care, you're going to have to really um, open up to your own magic and to really claim and own it. And um, so we're going to do some, we're going to do some clearings around that. And, and I'm going to hopefully maybe between us, we can channel some that might be really good and specific to you as well. And then we're going to talk about some tools that you can do to begin to invite your magic. And of course, I'm going to do the molecular infusion process with magic today. Um, so anything that everywhere that um, you're defining magic um, as any projections you have, any expectations, any judgments, any separations, any rejections you have with magic, decisions, judgments, conclusions, and computations you have with magic, can we now uncreate and destroy that? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine, boys, short, and beyond. Cool. So anything you've defined magic is that it isn't, will you uncreate and destroy that? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot and pock, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. And anything that you define magic as what it isn't, that it actually is, can we uncreate and destroy that? Yeah. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot and pock, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. Cool. So here's the other thing, guys. When we are opening up to magic or are resistant to open to magic, right, has everything to do with making limitation more valuable, more real than magic. That's ultimately what we're doing when we're not opening to the magic that we truly be. So this process um, came to me actually on the train in between Florence and Siena today that I, and I think it's a really powerful process, but what limitation are you holding on to so tightly with both hands that you can't and won't even begin to grasp the magic and miracle you truly be? Everything this brings mm -hmm. up and lets down, we won't create and destroy it. Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. So one more time, what limitation are you holding on to so tightly with both hands that you can't and won't even begin to grasp the magic and miracle you truly be. Everything that brings up and lets down, can we uncreate and destroy it? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. Because ultimately, guys, when you're like, eh, I don't believe in magic, la, la, la. It's like what you're doing is you're saying my limitations of what's possible and what's not possible are more important than the magic and the miracle of the entire universe. And, and what that does is it creates isolation and separation from the universe, from all of the molecules in the universe that could be contributing to you. Mm. That feels yummy. Mm-hmm. Right? So where have, we made ma where have we made limitation more vital, valuable, and real than magic? Can we... I think that on this one, hun, I think that we need to do some threes and fours and fives. What do you think? 
Okay. Okay. So for those of you who haven't been playing with us too much or, or aren't familiar with access, um, there's this process that we do where we use numbers and we'll like uh, the first number we're going to play with is the number three. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull energy from the earth, from the universe, up through your feet. And on the count of three, you're going to flick your wrist and kind of move energy out, almost like your body and your arms are a magic wand of moving energy. Okay, so three, the energy of three is about um, uncreating and destroying. It's about moving limitations. Okay, um, we're going to do threes and we're going to do fours, and fours are about opening the door, clearing any futures we put in place that have a limitation um, aspect to them. So it's like any time you go, oh, well, gosh, my life sucks, it's always going to suck, you actually just put that in your future. And so it's going to show up as a solid or as a limitation in your future somewhere. So the force helps to clear that and to open the door for actually you to begin to create a different future for yourself. And we're also going to play with fives, which is basically undoing the causal energy or what they call the algorithms of, like, it's this or this. I can do this or I can do this. I have to punch a clock, nine to five. That's an algorithm. And so what this no, it does is it interrupts um, the algorithms so that you can actually step out of that linear energy because when everybody, is, I mean, the question that Kira's asking is so relevant because when everybody around you is in that linear energy, you'll tend to pick that up and buy into it. So the number five is an interrupt for that energy so that you can actually be more of you in that space. So on the count of three, Everywhere that you have made your limitations more vital, valuable, and real than magic, can we uncreate and destroy that? One, two, three. 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 And everywhere that you put those limitations into your future for what's possible for you, what's not possible for you, um, what kind of magic can come in your future or can't come in your future, on the count of four, let's. Um, open the door for more. One, two, three, four. One, three, two, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And on the count of five, all the algorithms that you've been trained to that tell you that magic just isn't real, it's not possible, it's stupid, um, that's for the movies, <laughs> nobody believes in magic, grow up. On the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five. five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, um, that's another tool um, that you guys can use and here that you can use if you're kind of feeling that energy of a group kind of in that sort of stuck linear unbelief mode is to kind of break up the energy because you can actually change them but you actually can if you break that energy up create a little bit more space for you to be you there. Which is so funny that you're, I mean, I don't know if you're recognizing this, but even doing threes, fours, and fives is magic. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you're saying it's a mm -hmm. tool, but you kind of have to believe <laughs> in magic to do it. You know what I mean? Because, like, the cynical ones who we're kind of speaking of would be like, oh, so you wave your hands like a, a wand, and then you do one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and it clears this shit? Really? Like, okay, what drugs are you taking, right? So, I mean, even that is um, a funny thing, you know, like, a <laughs> so, um, yeah, so just, I don't, like, I just like that's a funny thing, that that's a tool, and yet that's magic, actually, too. You kind of have to believe. Um, and so anything that comes up around that, around that not being possible or that not actually shifting energy or, um, you know, or that not actually being magical, um, can we uncreate the story of that? Yes. <laughs> I think I got that out of somebody's head or something. But it just hit me all of a sudden. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Even the clearing statement itself is quite magical in the way, you know, that it's set up. So um, we're already into deep magic people. So if you don't think you're magic you're and you use these tools, then you're kind of fooling yourself because there's so much more magic inside of you. Like when we're in a class, like the Meister class, when Dane does uh, three, four, five, six, sixes, and now there's a seven, um, I think he even did eight this last time too, which is crazy. 
Um, but um, I, I feel the ripple of the energy in the room. It actually gives me full body chills. Like I know that things are changing. It's crazy. So, um, so yeah, I totally believe in the one, two, threes, but it really is a magical tool. So darling, we're back to our second break. So we'll have to come back and do more clearings and then do your magical infusion here in a minute. So you're listening to Love Life and All Things Weird. And we are asking you to be the magic that you be and activate the magic that you are. And we'll be back in a minute. Most people live in the land of either or. It's a scary and meager place where one can have either a happy relationship or a successful career where we can have either lots of time and no money or lots of money and no time to spend it. On Love, Life, and All Things Weird, Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer bring you inspiration, awesome tools for transformation, and full permission to claim your most ridiculous life. Together, they are the embodiment of opposites attract, and the result is true synergistic power. Finding yourself roadside in either or, Megan and Suzanne are here to reintroduce you to one very powerful three-letter word. And. Simple? Yes. Effective? Absolutely. Welcome to the land of and. Listen to Love, Life, and All Things Weird every Wednesday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is Love, Life, and All Things Weird with hosts Megan Silito and Suzanne Stoffer. Are you scratching your head a bit? Let's chat. Call into the program today and let's find some answers. If you're in the U.S., call 815-880-8255. In Canada, call 613-800-8736 or Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also send questions or comments by sending an email to Suzanne P. Stoffer at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody, to Love, Life, and All Things Weird. We're talking about magic today. Woo! Yeah, and we have people in the chat room getting the chills, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah! So I'd like to chime in with a few practical tips. I know it's not me to be the practical one, but I want to talk a little bit about um, the number one thing that kills our magic is when we deny it. Mm-hmm. So we were talked about this, we touched on it a little bit earlier about how, you know, something really cool happens and then you make up an excuse or reason um, that that happened, right? Oh, this happened because of that or that happened because of that. When you do that, you actually can sometimes create the opposite. So when you bring something into being, when you create something as if by magic and then you deny it, you will sometimes start creating the opposite thing. So if money comes in, let's say, and you didn't know where it was coming from, and it was like, oh, my gosh, that was so easy, da-da-da-da-da, and then you go, oh, well, it was probably this. 
what can happen is you can actually create now deficit with money because you're denying that you actually just manifested and created it. So there's this process that Dane gives around miracles where he says to write down at least 10 miracles that you've experienced, done, created in your life, right? And to keep writing them down every time that it happens. And the reason is, is that it, we have to claim, we have to acknowledge the magic that we be. And it has to become a practice. We've got to start going, oh, my God, that was magic. I did that. I created that. And know that even, like, stuff that you may not like the outcome of too much, right, that you're creating that, too, so that really the, the tool here is to realize that you are always – you are the creator. You are the affect of things, not the effect of things. Things don't just happen. You create them to happen. And um, so, like, that's the one tool that I'm going to have you guys do is I want you to start a magic journal. And I want you to start writing everything in your life that occurs as if by magic. And go and acknowledge it. And then begin to acknowledge that you're magic. And anything that doesn't allow you to acknowledge the magic that you be, will you want to create and destroy that place? Mm-hmm. Right, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine boys, shorts, and beyond. And that's something that we've been really practicing a lot, hon, on this trip is that mm-hmm. every time things show up that are super fun and super cool and we're planned, we're like, oh, my God, there's the magic. There it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to acknowledge it. And, you know, when I listen to Being You, um, I started my magic journal. Um, and at that point, I think I wrote down like 10 things that I knew knew was, were totally magic in my life. Um, and, you know, that was my whole life. And now I could write down 10 magical things in the last few days. So when you acknowledge it, it totally happens. Mm-hmm. It's the first it's the first principle of psychology, guys, what you focus on expands. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you focus on the magic that you be, the magic that is happening, the magic is occurring, what you're doing in essence is you're receiving it. Right. It's one thing to create magic. It's a whole other thing to receive it. If you're not receiving it, how can it grow? It would be like um, if you threw a seed into a parched piece of dirt. Right. And it has to get in that dirt to begin to gestate, to begin to bloom. And it's the same with magic. When we create it, when we generate it, we have to gestate it. We have to let it get inside the dirt. We have to receive it and go, oh, my God, we did that. That was us. We're awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, Shakti's actually saying that she wants to do a daily one, right? Like, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Mm Yeah. Yeah, every day, like, just start writing what what magic thing happened, what magic thing was created. And when you're having an off day, you know, like, that's the time to go in that journal and to look through it. It's like, wait a minute, my life is magic. If my life is magic, then this thing that's happening that I think is not supposed to be happening, it can only be for me. I mean, we think, again, we, we you can't define magic as only good things happen, lollipops and rainbows, like, I mean, part of the energy of magic is destruction. Sometimes things got to get all blowed up <laughs> so that you can create the next thing. And sometimes mm-hmm. things have to go away. It's that clearing we did earlier. If you're clutching to a limitation um, and you're asking for magic and you're asking for change, well, something's got to come in to have you unclutch that thing so that you can open your arms to receive the magic that you truly be. Mm-hmm. So, darling, we just have a few minutes left. So, are you going to do this infusion thing or what? Or what? Well, I, <laughs> I just have so much to say about this. I know. Um, that's why we're going to talk about magic next week, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, I want to say one thing because I know we have about we, I, we have about six minutes. So, I want to say one other thing. Cause, um, we have five. Really, okay. <laughs> this is <laughs> order chaos. Order chaos. <laughs> How cute we be. Uh, um, on the train from um, Florence to Siena just now, um, we were talking about this, and we're talking about how when we think about things as an accident, how it is such a dismissal 
<laughs> of who we be and when things come into our world. And I realized that because I was, a, I've been considering myself an accident my whole life because I was a whoopsie birth. And I just realized it's like I had this aha on the train. It's like, oh, my God, I'm not a magic. I'm not a magic. But but I've forgotten how to speak English. I am not an accident. And I'm like, I'm, I got here by magic. I'm a freaking miracle. And all of a sudden, this whole rewrite was going on in my brain. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I saw all these things that I saw as a happy accident. That, oh, my gosh, aren't I lucky that happened? Aren't I lucky? Aren't I lucky? And I was living my life as if there was, as if by accident almost. And Mm -hmm. when I realized that, I I mean, it it blew me away. I was like, oh, my God, there's this place where I've been denying who I be. And so what is that place for you guys? What is that place for the listeners, right? Where are you denying the magic that you truly be? Everywhere and anywhere, and all the little crevices, you're hiding it. You're hiding it under accident. You're hiding it under computation. By the way, part of what a miracle is is it's incomprehensible. So quit trying to comprehend it. Quit trying to comprehend magic. Quit, quit trying to comprehend miracle. Notice how light you feel when you talk about being a magic and being miracle, and whatever is light is true for you, and whatever is heavy is not. So own the truth of who you be, and you know, just like let go of the rest, like. Really, do you, like the denial of who we are has got to be the biggest disease on the planet right now. So everywhere we're doing that, can we all uncreate and destroy that place? Mm-hmm. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot and pock, all nine boys, shorts and beyonds. And anything that doesn't allow you to acknowledge the magic that you be in every cell of your being, in every cell of your body, I want you guys to just take a moment and let down the barriers. For those of you who don't know what that is, just imagine, just take barriers down. I imagine it as electric car windows going down. So anywhere where you're resisting anything, where you're holding back anything, where you're holding yourself as small, just take down the barriers just for a few minutes. Let me... Open the space for magic and miracles and the molecules to come into your being and infuse you and acknowledge the magic and the miracle that you truly be. So allowing those barriers to come down, come down, come down. Beautiful. Are you willing? Are you willing to give up your smallness? Are you willing to give up the limitation that you've seen yourself as, that you've seen your life as? Are you willing to even hold magic as a possibility, as a probability, as a as who you be? And I want you to imagine that you could feel the molecules dancing all around you and inside of you. And feel the space of you in between the molecules. Feel the space of you in between. And as those molecules dance around, I'd like you to say, I receive. I receive and acknowledge the magic I truly be. Molecules come dance. Molecules come play. I am ready to be my magic right away. Anything that's in the way of this, any points of view that are coming up, let's uncreate and destroy those. Do some one, two, threes, one, two, three. Feel the magic of the earth. Feel it coming up through your feet. Feel the magic in the air around you, the sun, the grass, the wood, the floor. Feel the communion that you are with the universe. Feel yourself in a dance with the molecules of the universe. Feeling them spin around. Thank you for listening to Love, Life, and All Things Weird. Megan and Suzanne will be back next Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. 
Be sure to tune in for more tips on how to live in the land of Anne and claim your marvelous, magical life.